Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2018 here in Durban, South Africa, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Shamil Jusup, who is the CEO of Vodacom. Mr. Jusup, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Max. Thanks yeah. for having me. I'd like to start off by asking you a little bit about smart digital development. It's the, the, uh, the key catchphrase here at ITU Telecom World this year. What does it uh, mean to you and how is Vodacom working towards it? Well, I think for me it's twofold. I think one is um, that we act as an enabler for smart uh, digital development, and two is, is that it's an enabler for us. Um, <clears throat> let me explain the difference between the two. One is um, and, and us and enabling um, the industry or, or, or the broader, uh, broader market, if you like. Um, and in that respect, it's important to, to have access to the right technologies, putting in the capital investment, Telcos are very much about the capital investment, so that you have to put in the capital investment, they have access to the latest technologies. And then that in itself will play a big role in helping uh, to transform society. Um, so that's the one, what, what, the, the one side of it. Um, and and the, in that, that respect, having access to the latest technologies is things like narrowband IoT, investment into artificial intelligence, um, uh, investment into 5G into the future, reading your networks for 5G, um, investment into fiber. So all of that is, is important in trying to enable the broader society. Uh, so that's the one part. And also strong partnerships, I would say. And as an, and as an enabler within, in, internally, it's about how we use this technology to make us um, smarter uh, in terms of the way we do things. Um, an example would, uh, of that would be artificial intelligence um, and machine learning um, you know, basically deployed into our, um, <clears throat> into our offerings, like our Just For You proposition, where today we sell 2.3 billion bundles, most of which are under, uh, on, on machine learning, and it personalizes the offer to each customer, and based on behavior, it then adapts the offer. Um, and that's been extremely successful for us. So, so that is, um, is, is, is in enabling us. Secondly, smart capex deployment. Which technology do you deploy where? Uh, smart maintenance, these type of things. So using big data analytics to help us um, create the right, um, you know, put the investments in the right places and so on. But also making us faster to market. Uh, so, um, you know, introducing Agile, uh, but also using, um, using a lot of the tools, uh, big data, artificial intelligence in various different categories from call centers to to deployment of uh, of uh, of network to online sales and so on so so for me it's 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 both I, I, I may be able to guess the answer but I'm just wondering in terms of innovation which uh, particular innovation do you think is going to be the most transformative well I think it's um, it's really comes down to I think 5g is going to be transformative um, in in a big way in that it now gives us capacity and I think um, it gives us capacity that can emulate and, and maybe even bypass what is possible uh, on a fixed line network today. Um, and that then opens up endless possibilities. Uh, secondly, it reduces the latency quite significantly. So, so uh, VR, uh, um, uh, augmented reality uh, now, now becomes more virtual reality, augmented reality becomes more possible today. And that then, you know, enables a whole lot of new industries um, and, and creates a whole lot of new opportunities. And then I think IoT is another one. So there's quite a few impressive technologies at, at the moment that are out there. That's going to require investment, but I think with it will come a lot of opportunity and so on. Um, and so that's, a, that's on, the, on, 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 let's say, the technology side. Um, I think the, the other thing that is crucial is, um, is policy. Um, and I think firstly having converged, um, that converged licenses are extremely important. So that, that, that's critical, access to 4G spectrum, access to 5G spectrum, um, especially in Africa, being, being proactive on it. Uh, you know, I would encourage governments to really get behind 5G early on. You know, we, only, we still don't have 4G spectrum in another, a number of countries, including South Africa, uh, where we're still waiting for 700, 800 and 2.6. Um, but you know, and recently in some of our countries only have now access to 4G. So I would encourage regulators to be on the, on, on, on the front foot on the 5G opportunity, particularly if we want to make a big uh, dent in, in, in the cost to carry 
um, on, on, on the one side, but also this could be transformative for us because we don't have a lot of fixed infrastructure in Africa. So this could be really a transformative technology for us. Yeah, it's not, not a sole, <coughs> solely concerning Africa, but I uh, wanted to talk about the rural connectivity gap. Just wanted to find out what uh, key factors you think are going to be able to close that. Well, I think f first and foremost, it's important for governments to have a clear policy and direction of what they want to achieve. Um, and especially in terms of rural coverage, I think there's quite a few innovative models that you've seen from around the world that could potentially work in, in different markets. But I think firstly, uh, policymakers need to be clear. One is obviously linking it to license obligations, so that's, that, that's, an, that's an obvious one. Uh, but also um, encouraging partnerships, uh, operators to work together, especially when it comes to rural, of rural coverage, uh, that's the one part. Um, and <clears throat> so that's important, and I think networks can 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 share uh, in 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 that respect. But the other part is, I would say, partnering with the likes of the Googles and the Facebooks, who are also trying to help to reduce um, the cost uh, by creating open source uh, type solutions. And I think we should really get behind behind that. We we're currently doing some of those testing with uh, with some of these guys. Uh, locally, and you know, if that can drive down our cost, so today it costs us about fifty thousand dollars to roll out a low-cost site. If we can halve that cost, we can roll out twice as many sites. So um, <clears throat> it's in their interest; it's in our interest. So I, I think fostering those partnerships, um, firstly from us as private sector, but also government can play a role in helping to foster uh, these parts, and also uh, you know, helping with just putting in rapid deployment and those type of things, which makes it easier for us to deploy in some of these rural areas. And of course, partnerships can really help to stimulate investment in uh, digital development. Very much so. So, I mean, your, um, the partnership part plays a big part, especially in the digital development space, um, in, in, in a number of respects, because it helps you to create ecosystems. Um, and I think, you know, for countries, we need to start to ensure that really from an education perspective, from our universities, from what we're educating, that we're really behind this, the, the, the opportunities that, that is going to be presented with this new digital development or what we're calling the fourth industrial revolution. Um, I, but <clears throat> it's important to get behind it, make sure that our syllabuses and so on uh, speaks to it so that we can create the right caliber of people, but also to foster more um, de 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 little development hubs, if you like. Uh, because with that level of innovation, um, you know, we can be on the, fo uh, on, the fo uh, on the front foot in terms of uh, things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, and create some homegrown solutions that, that can work not just for Africa, but for the world. And to close, I just wanted to ask your presence here at, uh, at Telecom World is obviously very valuable. I wanted to find out from you, what's the value of attending events such as this? Well, I think firstly, I mean, it's um, what you're doing is you're bringing um, you know, firstly, the, the, the regulatory part, um, international expertise from all over the world um, <clears throat> to one single event. So there's a lot of, firstly, show, showcasing you can see in terms of products and, and solutions and that, so that's one part of it. But more importantly is the meetings around it. Um, it's an opportunity to engage with, with people from all over the world. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> some of the meetings that I had earlier, you're starting to, you're meeting with policymakers. You're meeting with uh, international players from China, from 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 around the globe, um, and and there's areas of cooperation, right? So, so so I think that's that for me is the most important part of of the ITU. Shamal Joseph, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks.